Hello all. In this task, we are going to write the training and the evaluator function. Now both of these functions are going to be very useful in the training loop task in order to complete the training loop. So let's first start with the train function. So define train function. Now this function is going to take model, data loader and optimizer. Okay. Now firstly, but total loss initially is going to be zero. And here we are going to specify that model should be in the training mode. Now this is because when model will be in the training mode or uh, if it is doing any gradient computation. So at that time the dropout layer should be on. So this is some indication that the model should be on the training mode. Okay. Now for data in data loader okay let's also put here tqdm in order to track the patches or the loop tqdm now unpack the data in order to get the images and the ground truth bounding boxes images and the ground truth bounding boxes to data now we are going to move our images and the bounding boxes to the GPU device so images comma ground truth bounding boxes equals to images dot to device comma ground truth bounding boxes dot to device Okay. Now, bounding boxes, comma loss, when we will pass our image, this and ground truth bounding boxes to the model. So we will get the predicted bounding boxes and loss. Now here we are going to do the gradient computation steps. So uh, firstly we are going to mention optimizer zero grade is going to be zero. Now loss dot backward will find the gradients and optimizer dot step will update the weights and the biases that is the parameters of the model. Okay, and we are going to sum up all of the losses, total losses. So total loss, assignment operator, loss dot item. So every batch loss will be in the total loss. Okay, and uh, finally we are going to return the average loss. So total loss divided by length of beta loader okay let's run this cell now we are going to create the eval function so let's just copy this train function inside the eval function there is not going to be any gradient computation step or updatation of gradients or parameters okay so in the eval function we do not need any optimizer also here instead of train we are going to specify eval in order to off the dropout okay eval function okay so far so good one thing that you can also do here is you can also mention with torch dot no grade in order to be sure that there should be no gradient computation 
inside the eval function okay so far so good let's also run this cell so we have successfully created the train function and the eval function now both of these functions are going to be very useful in the training loop task so see you in the next task hello all welcome back in this task we are going to compare our actual bounding box that is the ground truth bounding box to the predicted bounding box so here we are going to import a utils that is the python file you can see in the dataset folder so this utils python file contains one function that is the compare plot which will be very useful to plot the ground truth and the actual bounding box image so let's first run this cell okay now we are going to load our best weights so model dot load state bit then torch dot load and uh, you can see our best weights here best model dot pt so best model dot pt okay now model dot eval with torch dot no grade okay image comma ground truth b box equals to valid set and here we will pass the index okay now image equals to image dot unsqueeze at axis zero dot to device now why unsqueeze zero this is because at this point our image shape is channel height and width but when we are passing the image in the model our our image tensor should be of width size comma channel comma height comma width convention so we are adding here width size as one at the zeroth axis using unsqueeze and passing the axis number okay so out b box equals to model of image okay so we are getting the predicted bounding box now let's use the function from utils python file that is the compare plots and we are going to pass image then ground truth box and the output the box that is the predicted bounding box here it is going to be ground truth bounding box okay okay let's run this cell. okay so you can see here the green is the ground truth bounding box and the red is the predicted one let's see another example okay let's see 23 okay so you can see here there is not much difference so one thing that you can try here is to use iou metric in this case we have used mean squ mean squared error now what you can do is you can play with the configurations you can go to the configurations and uh, you can change here the image size learning rate and even the model name you can also try efficient net b3 b5 or it is up to b7 so you can try any of that also you can try another model like resnet 34d or resnet 50 so there are plethora of models available in the team so you can try uh, another model also you can try training with higher epochs 
so things like that you can also change the batch size you can also take the image size as the actual image size then you can also change the learning rate so as i have already told this configuration is a remote control of this project you can just change the values here you can just change the model name and you can just run all of the cell so this is going to work okay so in this task we have successfully compared the ground truth bounding box and the actual one bounding box uh, we have actually compared the ground truth and the predicted not the actual so ground truth versus predicted so i hope you enjoyed this project so see you in some another project